Hello everybody, welcome to the week 7 match between PK83 and Tapioca King. No, it's week 8, isn't it? It's week 8. <laughs> Sorry, you'll have to excuse me, I'm a bit slow. The week 8 match. Um, so we've got PK83 with, you know, a really nice wolf with a strength up, move up. And, uh, you know, a necromantic team. They're, they're pretty much all the same, right? These necro teams, they get some guards and block. Um... They're really bloaty, so they tend to, you know, and they're, the, the fleshies have to take contact, so they are prone to losing fleshies, so they, it's rare that you have two super good fleshies on a team. And, uh, you know, they generally get really good wolves, right? And, and even all normal wolves are great. Uh, I'm not even that big a fan of the move, but honestly, like, I think sidestep's going to be better nine, nine times out of ten. But, um,. You know, it is what it is. Only one white here. Uh, the other one got killed in the last game, I think. And uh, and, a, and a bog standard orc team as well. The orc team have the wizard here. Wow. The orc team have a, has a wizard and like loads of mighty blow. <laughs> four mighty blow and a wiz and one, two, three, four, five, six guard, four mighty blow and the wizard. That's pretty good, isn't it? Twelve players. Choosing to field a rookie lineman rather than a dirty player lineman. Interesting. He's called DP as a good skill and he's choosing not to field him. Interesting. Not what I would do, but who can say if it's a good or, good or bad. I also kind of hate fielding the goblin here, right? Because the problem with the goblin here is uh, he has a movement 9 wolf. <laughs> and he has a rackle, goblin, a rackle ghoul. And like, you know, ghouls are move 7 with dodge. These are movement 9 with dodge. You're inviting trouble by having the ball on the goblin. I know they're a bit faster and they're a bit dodgier, but like against against Necro, one of the things is, you know, if you get down if you get down players and stuff, the wolves are a real terror, right? You, you know, if, if anyone it, they can kind of easily get hits on the ball. If that's a one dice, it's not so bad. If you're carrying on like a blitzer or a lineman, and you know, it, as it is, it wouldn't cost him anything, right? He, he's he's got a dirty player skill lineman on the bench, so he could have had another player. We wouldn't have to take a blitzer out of the fight. He could have just carried on a lineman. And I think as bad as a movement five player is to carry the ball, I think the strength three is worth it versus versus wolves. There you go. Whew, that was quite a long intro, wasn't it? Something's happened over the first three turns. Just generally punching people. Um, <laughs> you can you can see <laughs> you can see what's happened. <laughs> Things have been punched. Um, yep. Hello, Steve. Uh, I did actually get top-ranked Necro Coach on Fumble uh, by by foregoing uh, Fleshies. I think it's only okay, like if you're going to min max. To the max. I like that he got the. Uh, I like I like what Tapioca's has done in that he's got the um, linemen off to the side right there, the ones that can be picked off by the wolves. So you don't want to expose your good players to be able to be picked off by wolves. And uh, hello, Big Chichi. Hello, Daboom. And hello, Elliot. The legend is in the house. Thank you very much. Yeah, my NAF kickoff game is, is on in about an hour. Um, and I'm probably going to lose. <laughs> probably going to lose because it's somebody whose name I recognize and he has lizard men and I have dwarves. So that is a very bad racial matchup. And the fact that I know his name. Means that he probably has some idea how to play Blood Bowl. So, yeah. Less than ideal. Did he follow up into this guy? Probably shouldn't have followed up, right? Because now he's got to reinforce with another guarder. Or give up this hit. And we might see some kind of wolf. Hot wolf action. Maybe not, actually. It's a bit difficult, isn't it? It's a bit tricky. Maybe this guy is relatively safe. No, no, he's not now. He's, he gets power, so the wolf could come in here, couldn't it? But then I guess he gets exposed, so he might not. He might not. He might not blitz this guy with a wolf. Could blitz this one with a wolf, but then he could stand him up. Super interesting. Could just blitz this guy with a wolf. Oh, I don't like this. I feel like you want to blitz with your wolf, right? So maybe he's trying to pick this guy off. Or uh, or go in. Going in is very dangerous. You probably don't want to go in. But the the only tackles over here. 
Oh, that's interesting, I don't know. I'd want to try and get the wolves. I'd want to try and get some... Um, I'd want to try and get the wolves involved. Because even with only claw, like, there's a good chance you get stuns and removals, isn't there? Like, you know, kills. PMA. Yeah, exactly, Big Chichi. Look, at the end of the day, confidence doesn't matter. Uh, PMA doesn't matter. You, what is more important, much more important than that, is recognising how how bad or how good the game state is, right? And how good your chances are or how bad your chances are. Much, It's much more important to be accurate than uh, blindly uh, optimistic. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, GFI, GFI. Now, I'm not saying that's the best player, but that is a 3-2-2 two, two to hit the ball. Um, that's what happens with Wolves, isn't it? Uh, unbelievable. Like, two movement, nine Wolves is crazy. They're like they're gutter runners on crack, aren't they, when it comes to uh, blitzing. In a way, I like this guy getting behind, but on the other hand... It's turn five already, right? There's only three more turns left for Tapioca. Oops. Oh my god, quad skulls. There's only three turns left for Tapioca, so I'd, I'd, I'd probably try and get him in front, right? Just just get him, just stay in the way. As long as you keep your whole team here, it's really hard for the Orcs, right? Because they haven't got much speed. And if they make a push down the sideline, well then you've got surfs and stuff, potentially. I know he's got a couple of stand firm, but... There isn't Juggernaut, is there, on this guy? He's just chosen not to stand firm a few times. That's a really weird non-stand firm, I think. I'm stand firming that all day. Like, it's turn six. Grand Finnish Forest God. Is that is that Tapioca King? Is that a Finnish Forest God? Tapio is. Is Kaking the King? <laughs> or is it actually Tapioca King? No, it's not Tapioca King. He called himself Tapioca the King, I think. I'm bamboozled. No, sir. So, you know, this is kind of what, what the Necro wanted in a way, right? They've gummed up the middle. They've And now it's turn six for the Orcs. And he's made a bit of a break down the side. And his fast players can run over and uh, do things, potentially. Problem is, is that Tapio's done a pretty good job of getting down the side. I hate this non-stand firm though, right? Because if he if he just stand firm there, then this guy would have had to dodge off. Like letting him get away for free was. Uh... I guess now he gets to hit him with his wolf, which is pretty good. Pretty pretty good, and gets to try and dodge. You've got to try and dodge this one away. Yeah. Look how far he can go, it's crazy, isn't it? Crazy. Maybe he should have gone here or something. Maybe he should have had the strength four there, and then this guy here. Try and guard the sideline a bit more. This goblin. This flipping goblin. Oh. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. This is a really easy hit the ball, right? Dodge double GFI. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. Three, two, two to hit the ball with the rattle. This guy should have dodged. A million percent. A million percent this guy should have dodged. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
either to here, here probably, right? Here. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's probably where he should have gone to. Because, like, this Rackle is so such an obvious hit, he's not going for it. Well, he won in nines anyway. But uh, I guess he was going to go for a serve. I, I think you had to go for the ball there. But never mind. One in nine anyway. We'll never know what would have happened. You can smell the ball sack. Smells like victory. <laughs> well, there you go. The movement six ended up important on the ball carry and the strength two was relevant. However, I think, you know, there was a good chance of making that dodge and uh, getting the ball sack with that goo, but never mind. Didn't it happen? PK might get a uh, might get the one turn right with movement nine. It's hard though because that edge three really really screws you for the dodge through the back line. Hello, Mega Catten. Blood Bowl two, like it's crazy how beautiful Blood Bowl two is, isn't it? Because it's not a beautiful game at all. <laughs> it's so not a beautiful game, but. <laughs> Blood Bowl 3 is so <laughs> unrelentingly ugly that it makes Blood Bowl 2 look beautiful by comparison. <laughs> the great thing about Blood Bowl 2 is it's kind of clean, isn't it? It's clean and you can see what's happening. That's the, that's the, that's the thing. It's clean. He's not even trying the one turn. I mean, there's certainly an argument for not trying the one turn with having edge three, but um, I think with movement nine, you're, it behooves you to at least try, right? Because the, the player here, he, he did totally wide LOS setup, right? So what you can do is you can put one wolf here, push him to there, then push him down to there, and then you can have your other wolf here. And then you can push him like that and stuff, or maybe have the other wolf there, whatever. And then so you could you could then use your blitz to get through the back line, and obviously blitzing through the back line is amazing. So uh, I, I think it's very much you're only giving up like a claw hit. I think you try you try and do the uh, double pushes to start. Yeah, I think that was a missed opportunity. Re real good chance of a one turn actually with uh, if you get the the kind of lucky hits from the initial wolf punch. Oh yeah, there's like no polish at all in Blood Bowl 3, but I think the biggest thing is just it being clean and you can like, you know, look how bright the dice are, do you know what I mean? Like, it's funny because the brightness is horrific in Blood Bowl 3, but the brightness in this is good, like the bright the brightness of the dice is like clear, like they're clearly bright, whereas with Blood Bowl 3 you have darkness and bright and the brightness isn't clear bright, it's ugly bright. Whereas with this, you know, the dice are just super, super duper clear and bright. Yeah, it's contrast and stuff. Yeah, it's horrible. You even notice doing the... Honestly, I, I notice it making the thumbnails for the YouTube videos. Um, Blood Bowl 2, you know, like the background's the background, the foreground's the foreground. When you, when you make a... When you make a... A, 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 a thumbnail, it looks like a picture. When you make the thumbnail for the uh, Blood Bowl 3 games, it's just all in focus and it's mental. It's like there's no background or foreground. It's, it's so terrible. <laughs> right, well, Cyanide certainly fucked Blood Bowl 3. Anyway, uh, the Orcs are down to 10 men. Which isn't great, is it? One's a goblin, so they're really on nine and a half. So even with a wizard, it's hard to bet on them stopping this, to be honest. Maybe they've got to go, like, really... Really early wizard? And try to do something before, like, they run out of players? It's just hard. It's just, like, this is just so hard now. It's so hard, it's so hard. We've got a bit of a space invader set up here by Tapio to try and stop the uh, try and stop the frenzy shenanigans, and it looks pretty decent. 
I wouldn't mind piling in though, I really wouldn't mind piling in um, as the uh, necro to get a big claw hit, a big old claw hit. Like what one, the strength 4 one can get stuck in, right? The strength 4 one could get stuck in and then you can keep the other wolf back. Is he going for a quick score? Going for the the problem with going for the win is these two cars, these two are KOs, not cars. So going for like a quick score isn't going for the win too too much. Wow, he really he's really going for this. This is crazy, almost as crazy as the intense chest pain that I have. <laughs> Yes, both arms are fine. Oh. Commentary may be stunted for the rest of the match. Tub scores doesn't really roll. I'm surprised he's going for the win here. Keep double fisting. Dub skulls! <laughs> Dub skulls by both sides. This is weird. This is weird because going for the win, I guess at least you get used to cut score done right and it's 1 1. But now Tapio can like get a player back, use his wizard to score, and might win 2 1. But I guess if he doesn't get his players back, then maybe it's. Oh, and there we go, another one removed. Interesting. Um, oh, okay, he doesn't go in. And also, this is another point. Maybe he fucking needs the wins. Uh, PK83 is currently outside of a playoff position. Wow, there's a Kaz. Well, he's got to go in now, I guess. I guess he's got to go in next turn and try to go for the win. Um, so that's a good point as well, right? The league table wise. A draw isn't going to be enough for him, so while going for the win may increase his chance of a loss, if a draw isn't doing anything for you, then you've got to go for the win, haven't you? So, yeah, super interesting. I think next turn, you make the claw hit and score the touchdown. Is the correct player? Correct! Oh, maybe he can't even make the... Well, oh no, he can. He's got a free goo. So yeah, make, make the claw hit and then score. I guess you could make the fleshy and the white hit as well, actually. Oh yeah, I hadn't noticed it. Like, I did notice it, but then I just imagined it would go away and stop looking. <laughs> okay, now I would do claw hit first. That's the most important hit. So get the claw hit first, so if you you know if you have to re-roll dub skulls, then at least you've made your claw hit. Rather than these, so I think slight ordering. Slight ordering problem for me. Also he hasn't made a blitz. I, which makes me think he's gonna stall, which he shouldn't. I don't think he should stall here. But I think he's gonna stall. The fact that he's blitzing with the wolf, right? So he could have had an extra hit there. Right. Only one comes back. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good in the end from PK eighty three there, you know, because also the one that got one's a goblin as well, right? So it's down to eight and a half players. And he's still got eleven. Tapio with the wizard though is still uh Still a bit dangerous. 
But yeah, I guess I guess this is looking really good for PK83 now. So bravery rewarded. Yeah, that's a good point actually, isn't it? He's probably got to go for the win at this point. And they probably both have to as well. It's funny, isn't it, Bash teams? Because Bash teams really don't go for the win so well. But if that's what they've got to do, the playoff spots, that's what they've got to do, isn't it? Tapio indoor. Rush to score apart from just players-wise. That's the, that's the thing for Tapio. Oh, I don't like this. He could have got an extra, extra hit and a push one. I'll do this hit first, and then if you power like he did, he could have blitzed from here and then pushed him into an additional hit. And while yes, it's a blockless hit, it's still an additional hit, isn't it? Still giving you marginal increased chances for a knockdown. And obviously, he could have made the blockless block at the end of the turn. A blockless block. I also like this guy in front a lot because it's too easy to blitz this guy and get pressure. So if you put this guy behind him, then it protects him from the frenzy blitz a bit. And uh, keeps, you know, like a kind of double screen almost. Or you could even go there as well, right? But there or there, or there as it is, this guy's going to get nailed by a wolf, which is exactly what happens. And you can pressure the gobble super easily. Which is also what happens. Ah, I'm surviving. <laughs> it's somewhat dissipated. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for caring. That's nice, isn't it? I'm just trying to breathe as I'm doing it. Oh, here we go, fireballing. Oh, maybe it, was, maybe it was to tempt the commitment for the fireball. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe it was a good idea to draw them in. The old suck my dick punch on the nose. But uh, I think it probably wasn't. I much preferred my idea. Or like, you know, put the ball there, right? You could have just kept the ball here as well. That's that's an option. This goblin could have just been over here. But once you put the goblin there, I think then you want that guy to protect that guy as well. You've got the canoring threat. Maybe you could have geified. One, two, three, four, five, geified, geified. So maybe you could have geified him at the end of the turn, right? So he's got a scoring threat just in case everything goes tits up. Yeah, I've had, um, I've had, uh, what's it called before? Gallstones before, right? And when I had gallstones, I had, uh, they like came out and like blocked, blocked something, you know, like my liver or whatever, probably my liver, because I had that thing where you turn yellow, whatever, whatever that's called. That thing where you turn yellow. So I look like Homer Simpson. I literally look like Homer Simpson. John this yeah, I look like fucking Homer Simpson. And like, that was just like, that was scary. That was really scary because before I went yellow, um, I just had like ridiculous chest pain. And it was just like, you know, then I was re really, really worried that it was something to do with my heart. I was like, I was so scared because it was just like constant, unrelenting chest pain. And I was very, 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 very scared for like two or three days. <laughs> and then, uh, and then was able to, you know, go to the hospital and everything. And it was all alright, but uh, it was a scary few days. Just not knowing what it was. So this isn't as intense as the first one thing. But it's just random. It's more or less alright now. Oh, what a huge 1D. Very greedy 1D as well, wasn't it? Like, it's probably the right play, honestly, to get this Blitzer through afterwards. But, um, you know. Oh, I'm dodging this one. I like dodging him as well. 
I think this is I think this is good to roll a few dice here to try and get yourself out of it. I think this was I think this was good by Tapio. But uh, you know, and he did need that guy there, right? Because obviously this time he's seen the simple dodge off blitz. He doesn't even need a dodge off, he just gets to punch him off. So again, maybe maybe this guy could have been one back or something, so that uh he would punch him into a guard assist. Oh, it wouldn't matter against strength for him, would it? We got him. Yeah, I was like, uh, I had the chest pain for a few days, and then the day that I went to the hospital, I thought I was fucking dying. I swear down. I swear down. I like, I, I literally, I was like, you know, I was put in a wheelchair and stuff. Like, I just couldn't walk. I was absolutely fucked. But um, I got loads of morphine, and that did quite a good job. <laughs> but I was like fully yellow. I just, <laughs> I, I just turned yellow. I turned yellow in the full-on Homer Simpson. It's sad, isn't it? Why? God, how many dub schools are in this game? It's sad that when you're young and you know, like, well, say young, if you're if you're somewhat my age, you know, you were young and you were like, oh, The Simpsons is great. I'm like that, and then and then it's now it's like, oh no, <laughs> oh no, I'm Homer. <laughs> <laughs> Sent home three times, fuck me. Yeah, my liver was was uh, was affected with the cold stones. Pancreatitis, that's that's what I that's what I got. It gave me pancreatitis. If you're interested. And boy howdy was it fucking scary. Oh my god. Oh my god, he was so close. If he catches that, he's away, isn't he? There's no catching him. There's actually no catching him if he'd caught that. Flip me. Tapioca. A three plus away from disaster. And he's still got a lot to do here. Hasn't really got anybody free. Oh, 1D! No re-rolls! Maybe he should have blitzed, right? Maybe he should have blitzed. He should have blitzed and gone 1, 2... Because he... He, um... It could just a push would have paired him off, right? So he could have pushed. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, and at least get a tackle... Tackle, tackle zone on the ball. So he should have probably blitzed. I think that was the play. He's the tackle one. Yeah. Uh, three minute turns. Blitzing with this guy. This fucking guy. Oh, getting the scoring threat. Wow. Okay. Whew. That is optimistic, isn't it? But I guess that's the thing, right? If you've got to win, if you've got to win, then, uh... Then, then it makes sense, right? Like, because both of these, I think, Tapioca's on like the borderline of qualifying, and PK is out of qualifying. So I guess they've both got to win. So you know, um, PK can he not? He's in range. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. GFI, GFI. So, you know, all you've got to do is like punch, punch. Go hand off score. So you can you can pretty much you can pretty much uh, score. Oh, he goes for the scatter. Doesn't really help him, does it? But it could have done. So four three three. With dodge. Wait, 
what? 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, that... That, I don't understand. Maybe you were scared of losing, but again, I think they both need the win. You know, I think they both need the win. I think you've got to go for the win. I th like, initially, this looks this looks a bit crap. But actually, you do need... I think, you know, I do think you need the thing, but I just don't... I think you have to go. Like, it was 4 3, three two, 2 Like, okay, your wolf might die, but so what, you know? I think you have to go for that play. But there you go. 1-1 one, one draw. There was a million double skulls in that game, wasn't it? Absolutely you're like crazy. The, uh, you're like the guys with a blood ball, didn't you? Just and then it's not actually that crazy in total there. But then they might not track them properly. Because when you re-roll the dub skulls, like when you, when you get quads, they don't show up or, or something. But I guess they both... That's crazy. It's crazy that they rolled like a totally normal amount. Both teams rolled a totally normal amount of, of skulls. And yet just rolled like loads of dub skulls. So weird. Anyway, yeah, I think I think he. Sh I think, I mean, look where look where look where he is. Right, he had to go for the win. You know, if he gets the win, he's on three one, three one four, and he's looking a lot better. So, I think they both. I think they probably both had to go for the win there. In terms of, I guess Tapio can settle for the draw more. But anyway, so this is the league table here. We've got the top eight are all qualifying for the playoffs. So at the moment, Sick as Eggs is missing out, shockingly. PK83 is missing out. And Squiggy and Drac are, uh, you know, the bottom two. There, and that's almost certain that they're going to be the bottom two, to be uh, to be fair. Drac's team, undeveloped. And Squiggy's team, murdered. So um, so the, the interesting things are like the kind of these four. Duking out at the bottom to see who gets the last two spots and maybe five and then up at the top the top five as well like it's crazy close right we've got 20 for Elyod <laughs> I f I really fucked it up this week and only have 16 I should have had 18 I just absolutely threw away the points unforgivably terrible absolutely terrible could have scored without dice rolls could have just won without dice rolls and then handed off so just idiotic play by me. I should be on 18, but instead I'm on 16. And then we've got 15. And then we've got 13. And then 12 and 12. So, like, it's still really good. And then 11. So, so you know, we've got really close between the top seven even. Well, two and seven is really close. Anything can happen. It was hilarious, Pogba, but it was objectively terrible blood ball, right? I should have just scored and won. All I had to do in the first goal was just win 36 times out of 36. But I thought, well, I'll probably win anyway, right? 35 out of 36. And I probably would have won anyway, but, you know, never mind. I should have just made sure. If I'd made sure of the first score, I could have tried to win 3-0, right? I could have actually tried for the 3-0 if I'd just made sure of the first score, but never mind. Um, but, yeah, Elliot's pretty much got it sewn up. So, you know, good for him. And then the rest of us, are, there's about, you know, six, maybe even seven people battling for the last two spots. Um... And yeah, you know, if I had won that last game, I would have almost had the second spot wrapped up. Well, you know, top three almost wrapped up because everyone's going to play everyone else. That's the thing. Like, not everyone can get the points. Um, so, you know, like ne next week, I think. Uh, I think it's Elliot. Uh, no, oh god, I think it's Danton versus Jedi Bear. I think. No, Danton versus King Boo. Yeah, Danton versus King Boo. So, like, you know, not everyone can get all the points. So, if I had just got up to 18, I, would, I think I would have been safe, honestly, if I'd won that game versus the Rats. And then I just threw it away. So, there you go. Again, only 1 in 12, 9, 6. But still, I still just threw it away. I could have just won 100% of the time. I had a certain win, and I threw it away. So, that is the worst play anyone has made in Era BB this season. So, there you go. Um, right, and on that bombshell, thanks for watching everyone, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.